Welcome to another Kids at Home conversation from Kids at Heart International. And today we'll be focusing on how God can use the spiritual practice of study to transform us and uh, to transform the children that we care for. So today's conversation is called Learn God's Way. And I'm Gordon West. And I'm Melissa McDonald. And welcome back, Melissa. Good to see yeah. you. Thanks. Uh, and we're delighted to welcome our very special guest, Vernie Shore Love, to join us in this conversation. And I got to tell you, we could take the whole half hour, half hour talking about Vernie's uh, credentials. She, she was actually one of my text mentors. Uh, I just reorganized my library and came across so many Vernie Shore books, uh, and now Vernie Shore Love. And and uh, she she was instrumental in the. Jesus Film for Children. She was the Campus Crusade International Children's Leader. She's been a children's pastor, a trainer, a mentor, and more recently has entered this realm of spiritual practices for children. And, and uh, Vernie and I got reacquainted a number of years ago where we said, wow, this is exciting that we've, our, our generation has learned to go from education to relationship uh, with children. And her book, Spiritual Disciplines for Children, is one that Kids at Heart highlights in our classes with Hope International University, uh, where we, we offer an online class uh, for nurturing spiritual formation for children. And Vernie's book is vital to that. Today, Vernie is uh, the founder and leader of Character Choice Mission. And its mission is to equip individuals to become capable guides who practice biblically-based spiritual disciplines and instill those in children. So welcome, Vernie. How are you doing in your home in Colorado? Thank you. We are well, We are good. Uh, it's fine to quit snowing. It seems <laughs> to be something that happens in Colorado late in spring and freezes all our fruit trees, which it did again this year. It's very predictable. Oh. But I, I'm um, honored that you've invited me to be part of this. Thank you. Well, and I'm We're glad so, you. So I'm glad, glad you got some cold because we also cooled off. We dropped from the hundreds back into the nineties this week. So, <laughs> I'm not even going to interject here because you both have the extremes. So I'm yes. good. I was you're, you're somewhere in the middle and happy. Okay, good. Yeah, I am. All right, so let me start off with a couple questions for both of you guys and for all of us. What do you enjoy so much? that you will commit to studying it in order to really know it and experience it deeply. So like, what makes you say this enriches my life so much that I want to become knowledgeable on a master level about this, um, or I want to experience this as much as possible. So other than church and maybe Christianity things, what, what would that be for you? For me, it's my garden. I love my garden and I was able to, uh, four years ago when we built our home, to actually uh, learn about and have a person teach me about how to design a garden and then what grows when, and especially in Colorado because things do grow differently because of our seasons. And it is a place of refuge for me. Uh, the other day I had some hard things take place and I thought I just need to go to my garden and I did. I love little, gardening as well. Mine's a little bit similar to that. Um, it, or some of this, it, it reminded me of it, Vernie, is mine's hiking. And um, since I've taken up hiking, I've started, I've recognized how much I don't know about it. So a good friend of mine on staff, Pat, pointed out that I had all the wrong clothes. I needed to get, get hiking clothes. And so I kind of, you know, he helped me research that and find it out. And then I got an app and I actually even paid for an app so that I could have the right... Uh, you know, mapping devices, and I could read the reviews, and and it's really it's it's really meaningful to me to sit down and find a place. I ask God to show me which which place we should go to tomorrow, and then reading other people's reviews and finding out what they thought of it and and what I should take and which way I should go, and it just that brings me joy. It's it enriches. Me. I love that. I'm a I'm a foodie, so I like to know where are good places to eat, what makes it good. Um, but also being in my garden, Vernie, very yeah. much so. That is one of, and actually there's a squirrel that I think is trying to eat my zucchini plant right now. So if I get up or I meet myself, you see me at the window banging that I want you to know that's what's happening. <laughs> it's not yeah. Luis. It's, you're, you're it's not, not Luis. It's, you're not no. yelling at Luis. Okay. Not well, today. You, well, you know, I think the interesting thing is that uh, as I, as I mentioned, you know, Vernie and I and Becky, you know, we, we were a generation of people that taught 
the Bible one way, but we really think that God is inviting us to view the Bible in the same way that we just talked about hiking and gardening and things and food and those kinds of things. So I wanted to ask you guys, how did it happen? What got you interested in opening the Bible and studying it for yourself? Or it was there a person or an event? And uh, how did you start seeing that as, as a guide for your life instead of just a, a book of facts? Well, I think that from the beginning, which for me, I was not, had, uh, was not from a family that were, of believers at all, but the, my Sunday school teacher, Mrs. Allen, I'll never forget her, was the one that introduced me to the Bible. And she loved it. Um, and I was only 11 or 12, probably. Um, but she, uh, she just talked to me about how this was be something that would guide me, no matter where I was or what I was doing. And it's true. Interesting. So, so that relationship and her modeling that love for it has stuck with you all these years. Yes, right. Uh, and she loved right. me. And that's the relationship part. She yeah, loved yeah. me and introduced me to her friend, Jesus. Yeah. Mm. Oh, nice. I think for me, I'm a, I'm a big reader and uh, growing up read a lot of fiction. And I remember the first time I read like a biblical fiction and all of a sudden the Bible became a story instead of just pieces that I needed to memorize or parts that, you know, applied, it became a story. So for me, narrative is a really big deal. I really love story. Um, and I think what's been the biggest thing for me is actually teaching kids the Bible and realizing I want the Bible to come alive for them. Therefore it has to be alive for me. And so, um, reading it with story in mind has been a big deal for me, realizing that this is, this is God's story. And, uh, there's so many great stories in it. So narrative's a big deal for me. And that was, that was one of the big ones. And I do think too, I didn't have a teacher like you had, Vernie. I had, I had decent teachers, but they taught me more information and facts and less about the relationship and the, the invitation to be a part of the story God was writing. And so I probably learned a little more of what not to do and what I didn't want to do as a children's pastor. And that was, uh, that has proven to be a very helpful thing as I teach kids. Oh, just... Well, and interesting, this isn't a new thing. Uh, D.L. Moody said the Bible was not given for our information, but for our transformation. Not for information, but transformation. Yeah. And and I, I always want, you know, with kids at heart, we, we, as we train teachers, as we train moms and dads, we want to call back to that goal. And the purpose of inviting children into the spiritual practice of study is not so that they can know about God. The purpose is that children know God. And that's a little bit different uh, because we have to know a person. We have to know God to fall deeply in love with Jesus. I think for for decades, children's ministries isn't all that old. Um, we, we're newer than youth ministries. I mean, it's always happened in the home, but as, a, as an official place in the church, we're you know, four or five decades old. And in that time, we've gone from boring children to educating them well, to entertaining them, but all of it was kind of about facts. And now we've seen children really need to connect with God, and, and the study of scripture can do that when we do it the right way. So let's dig into that and, and figure out what that all means and what difference that would be. So if, if we can all agree that the spiritual practice of study, which that right there, I'm like, I don't talk about this, but it's not actually just about that. It's, it's more than just getting a bunch of information. It's this relationship. It's knowing God more understanding. How do we define this practice for kids? How do we have, uh, define it as it applies to children? Well, if you want me to go back and quote my book. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, if you don't, I will, Vernie, because they're just brilliant pearls in your book. Well, again, thinking about how children um, think and learn concretely, we needed to find some words that describe what, what study was that doesn't sound like study. But it, and also that would take them to the place where they're having a relationship with God. And that was simply to, to observe, which is, when I look at the, when I read the Bible or study the Bible or instead of studying, I'm looking for what is the, these words saying about God. And, and then 
being learning from that or being informed from it. We use the word form, but learning from from that and uh, and then more more than than just the words, but look at the ways. How did Jesus do this? What happened with these characters? What was going on in the in their own culture in the places or I like to use the phrase in their walk around everyday walk around world that they that was going on in that time in that place. And then of course I love using imagination with the children. What was it like to have been there? What would your what would mm. you born? What was going to be the color of your robe? You and know? children are so good at imagination when we allow them to be. Right. So that's what we do when we study. We do a lot of imagining. A lot you know, of you know, Scotty May um, says something similar about that. We, we look at Jesus's words, which is really important, but we forget to look at his ways. Right. And, and that makes all the difference. I, I know for me, um, it, it, there was kind of a, a second birthing of, of this practice, because when you're, when you're a new believer reading and, and all of the data, I mean, these are just stories I had never heard. I didn't grow up in the church. But there was a difference. And what I want to identify for children is when I read this scripture, paying attention to how God is speaking to me personally in this passage. And something about that, to me, that, that takes study from a, a school type thing to study that I would do when I get a, a, a letter from somebody that loves me. And I want, and somebody I love that I want to study and, and read every word and know exactly what they said. And, uh, you know, I've come across a, a couple of notes that I had saved uh, and forgotten about since, since Becky has passed away. And believe me, I've studied those and they're pure joy and, and grief, but, but the, it's, not a, it's not like going back to school. And that's what we want kids to know is that this isn't a, a difficult thing. It's a joyous thing, but it is a serious thing. Well, and I, well, what, oh, I'm go sorry. ahead, Bernie. Go ahead. I was going to say what, what I think the transition for me has been in my early years as children's pastor and whatever I was, wherever God had me at the moment, I taught with the idea of of learning, but we we memorized verses and we, um, you know, knew how many books there were in the Bible and we knew that there was an Old Testament, New Testament, and that's all still important. But I think what we've needed to do is come to the place where we help the spirit of children meet the spirit of God. Okay. That the relationship, Henry and Mary used to say, at first I learned to love my teacher and then my teacher's God. I'm not throwing that one out totally, but I think it's more, I want children to, I want their spirit to connect with God's spirit, even before they connect with me as a teacher, if I can find a way to do that. And it's kind of all works together, but it's a different uh, mindset for me now as a person working with children. What can I do to help them connect with the spirit of God? Well, and as you said earlier, Bernie, the fact that that teacher loved you I think that I think when the child feels loved, it, it gives the teacher that open door to connect the child with God. Absolutely. But, but if we never ch connect the child with God, we've missed that goal. Right. If always connected them with a study, then we've missed it. Yes. We find a way to study to, that it brings the child to his so, spirit, her spirit to their to God's spirit. Yeah, I love that. I love what both of you are saying because as I go around and I train adults one of the things I'll talk about is I do think, I do think information is important, but I do think for many years we made information the goal and we forgot about transformation. So I'll talk about like the fruit of my first few years in full-time ministry is kids who know all the right answers who don't know Jesus. So they know, they know how many books are in the Bible. They know the song, they know, but they don't actually walk with Jesus now. And so I'm always like, let's flip that coin. What if we looked at transformation first and information as a help to that? So I love that. One of, the, one of the questions I have for you specifically, Bernie, is what are some common misconceptions that might be out there as far as studying for kids? So what are misconceptions that we might need to set aside as we offer this habit of spiritual practice to kids? Uh, give me a little more hint. Where Are we talking so, about that? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that it can become very heady. So for instance, when it comes to kid, can kids study the Bible? Probably not. It's too hard or it's too big. It's too adult. So what are some of those other misconceptions out there that you've 
heard or experienced? Well, or it's too, um, uh, you know, it's too scary. I mean, you know, some of the battles yeah. that, things that go, go on with it. Um, Although I do have to say, I, I learned a lesson a hard way about uh, exhausted children at camp acting out Bible stories. And um, let me just say that the uh, hospital visit will keep me from ever assigning <laughs> third and fourth grade boys the ba a battle scene to act out. And yeah, it, it didn't go well. So we, we may want to be careful, but <laughs> yes. Well, and I think the other thing that goes out is that they, they can't understand the Bible. And that's true because mm -hmm. it is a book that was written by adults for adults, really. So one of our things we have to do is to be a translator of the Bible because children think concretely, but that's mm -hmm. a misconception. They can learn the Bible. They can understand it and they can be the, their hearts and their spirits can be touched by it we just need to get it on a level where they uh, can appreciate it and understand in their little concrete minds yeah i think too what i've seen is it the bible can either be people say well it's too boring for kids or like we mentioned it's too much for them and i my very personality <laughs> likes to do the opposite of what people say so it's rebellion or I need more of the spirit. We, we never realized that, Melissa. I'm Gordy, Gordy, where's the mute button for you? <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things I love doing is I had to settle in my own spirit. First of all, God's word is it's living and active, sharpen the need to edge, Lord. It's, it is the inspired word of God. Therefore, there are not parts that I, I need to hide from kids so they can learn from it. So uh, even yesterday we did story time, we're doing live story time, my husband and I with kids on Facebook and Instagram. And um, we did, I talked about Rahab and we're so quick to gloss over what's hard or we make it sound nice. And so we talked about like, man, Rahab was somebody who made some really poor choices and she was kissing and hugging men that she wasn't married to. And because of that, the whole town thought she was dirty but her sin was no worse than my sin. And, and kind of bringing it, like we said, like you're saying, let's help them get it at a, at a spot they can understand. But I love, like, I love talking about Joseph and Potiphar's wife. I bring it to a level that they can understand. And I love helping them understand that um, all, all the Bible is useful. All of it is exciting. Um, the, the piece, I love what both of you have shared with that, but the piece that concerns me at, at times is when we as adults think we have to uh, dissect it and boil it down and regurgitate it for the kids yeah. on the level of what to do about it and what this means yeah. for them. I, th I think we, we bring it to their level to be understood, but then we let, let God and the child take it where it's supposed to go. Um, it's almost, yeah. a, there's, there's a picture I get of, of typical Bible teaching for children where it's almost like the mama bird is going to take the food and chew it all up and spit it in the, the baby bird's mouth and, 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 you know, that's fine for a baby bird, but children and God can actually communicate. This, like, we, like we talked about, the spirit connecting. So, so we have to be careful not to try to do all the work for the children, not, not mm -hmm. to, and, and not to do even worse, to do the work for the Holy Spirit. We need mm -hmm. to let God be God and the kids be kids. And I, I like your word, Vernie, to be a translator. So we're helping the living word be understood by the children. Yes, and I think another thing that where another place that I've been going that's a little bit different than what I've taught before is to look at uh, the places in the scriptures where I can help children develop a true view of God. I've talked to so many adults that come up and have they have it's not a true view of God, and I think we install that in our children. When we, you know, maybe. Uh, a child is told, you know, you, you have to go to some place and, and behave a certain way. And if you, you know, I can't see you, but God can. And so God becomes a spy in the sky, you know, that runs around after him watching to make sure he does the right things. Well, that's not a true view of God. So if I can help the children develop a, a true view of God, that's my first goal. And my second goal these days is to help them with their own identity that they from the beginning understand and from the earliest possible age that they are a child of God and they are a well-loved or beloved child of God. We're working pretty hard at that. We're creating some new curriculum around that. So, so goal one is 
uh, the child's accurate view of God, and goal two is uh, the child understanding God's view of them. Yes, basically, or that's, and, and that the that identity gets established from the very beginning that that's yep. who they are, a child of God. Well, and I think your goal one, um, when we believe that that children develop a relationship with God by knowing about him, then we teach the Bible as facts that should be obeyed. And that's what you were getting about, that that's a, a false view of God, that a relationship is by knowledge and obedience. Um, there were some people in, in Jesus's day on days on earth that were really good at knowledge and obedience, and he called them Pharisees, and they weren't high on his list. So we teach children to be Pharisees, unfortunately. We do, we do, and yeah. and if so, the true view of God is His love, how much He loves us, and how that love crosses over everything else. And so, if I can start out knowing and understanding that God loves me no matter who I am or what I am or where I am or what I do. Yeah. Uh, and there are consequences to my choices. That's yeah. what we call character choice. <laughs> but, uh, right. uh, but to start there rather than start with just the knowledge of knowing. Well, if, if they know that deep-seated in their soul as a child, that drastically affects some of the teenage decisions and the teenage, even though, even if I make a bad decision as a teenager, if I know where my identity is found, that changes how I process a bad choice, right? That, exactly. that and, you know, and your motivations in making judging. the choice. Yeah, exactly. and your motivations in yeah. doing it. You know, yeah. Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 22 speaks directly to this and for children. It says, my child, pay attention to what I say. Listen carefully to my words. Don't lose sight of them. Let them penetrate deep into your heart, just like you were saying, Mel for they bring life to those who find them. What other scriptures come to mind for you guys? One of the things I like to do is, first of all, I have to establish with kids that, that, that God's word can be trusted. Um, and so we, I'll even do phrases where we'll go, um, God's promise, promises are true, he can be trusted. And I find then, if they go, yeah, I, God can be trusted, That then the whole Bible comes alive because they go, oh, that's true. But one of the things I've been teaching a lot out of Joshua just in the last couple of weeks, um, basically to my computer screen, because, you know, I'm not going anywhere, but um, in verse seven, you know, God's saying, be strong and courageous for you are the one, or be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do study this book of instruction continually. I just love that there's that idea of this is where we go. Truth is where we go. Don't look to the left and the right, just stay the course. And, but I find that kids will argue with, with everything because that's their um, spiritual gift as children. But <laughs> if, if I can help them see that the Bible is living and active and true, boy, then it's, it's rife with promises. It's rife with God's goodness and lessons they can learn from it. So I personally, for me, I've been looking at Joshua just because that's where I've been teaching out of, but uh, I love but, Psalm 119 as well. But Melissa, I love your, your, you know, your joke about kids arguing, but it shows a teaching style yeah. that's critically important because the kids yeah. have the questions. They have the pushback. If they're not allowed to say those, then they still have them. They just have, don't have the loving Christian adult to help walk them through them. So we well, want that's, kids. that's when we get kids that go, you know, they grow up to be teenagers and young adults and go, well, church was nice, but it wasn't for me. And the Bible's a good story, but it didn't matter. And, 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 it, and any questions I had, nobody had answers for. Exactly. So, so, so let me look elsewhere Bible, for answers. Yeah, how does, inter, how does it, I'm always looking about how does it intersect? One of the things I always pray about as I, Vernie, I speak at camps all summer long. I used to before 2020. Um, but I always pray and think through not what do I want them to learn at camp? I think, what do I want them to take home? Because for me, it's not just about they learn this big lesson at camp. It's about they can go home and faith is intersected with their everyday life. Their everyday walking around. Isn't that what you said? Or yeah, your everyday whatever. walking around life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyways, we need to move on. Sorry. I got excited about that. <laughs> okay. It's a good thing to be excited about. Vernie, are so, there other scriptures that, that help you define what this looks like with kids? Well, I, I love the message 
And, you know, Deuteronomy 6 is there really uh, calling uh, parents and adults that work with children. I'm going to just read it to you for a minute. May I do that? Please. I haven't memorized this, <laughs> but it's in my heart. Love God, your God, with your whole heart. Love him with all that's in you. Love him with all you've got. That's what I want children to do. I want them to love him with his whole heart, with everything that's within them and all that you've got. Um, and, and Deuteronomy goes on to talk about writing them, uh, the, write these commandments I've given you today on your hearts, get them inside of you. I love that. I love that translation, get them inside of you mm -hmm. um, and get them inside of your children. Um, and that's what, you know, that, that message is so um, pertaining to what I'm really, really wanting for children and for what they, to develop their spiritual life with God. So how do we do that? <laughs> What are some practical ways that um, we can actually use the spiritual practice of study to invite children into learning God's ways that bring that kind of life? One of the most recent and, and powerful and meaningful things that took place with me with a child recently was, well, recently, last fall, recently, we don't, you know, we do everything on Zoom, but um, her name is Audrey, and um, I was doing some spiritual um, uh, direction with her. Um, her parents brought her to me because she was lying, and her uh, she was lying to everyone, her teachers, her, you know, friends, um, and they had taken her, she, in fact, when they came in, I asked her why she, you know, what it was that, why she was there to see me, and she said, well, I'm lying to everybody. And I said, well, has anyone helped you with that? And she said, well, I've been to a counselor. And I said, oh, and that didn't work. And she said, no. And I said, well, why are you lying? She said, I don't know, I just, I just need to lie. I said, well, and then she shared with me, though, that it was getting her in a lot of trouble because she couldn't remember her lies and, she, you know, all the whole things going on lying. I said, well, why don't you just stop? And she said, you sound like my counselor. She told me just to stop. She says, I can't. I said, do you know a person named the Holy Spirit? And she said, no, who's, who's that? I said, let's look. I, I said, I know your family reads your Bible. You, you read your Bible. Let's look in John 14. And as I read this to you, just think about what is being said to you. And so I read John 14. It's about the Holy Spirit and how he's a helper and guide. And so we talked about how, oh, he's a helper and he's a guide. And I said, um, I'd like to have you think about talking with him. Just when you start lying, and you can't do this yourself. You've already told me you can't do this yourself. So ask the Holy Spirit to be your helper and guide and to stop you. She said, that won't work. I said, well, I don't know if it'll work. I challenge you. And I said, I have a little song. We have a song about the Holy Spirit as your helper and guide, giving you power to do what is right. So we sang that song. We, the next three times together, we sang the song, danced with it, looked again at John 14. And this was about three, maybe four weeks. The fourth week, I think, she came, we came back and she said, it works. I said, what do you mean it works? She said, the Holy Spirit's stopping me. I oh, said, great. Oh. You know, and we went on and talked a little bit about, about some of the things she, but that just guiding our children to, again, I'll use that phrase again, guiding their spirit to learn and to know the spirit of God is what i mean it's his job it's our job just to guide him to the holy spirit it's the holy spirit's job to do the work and the transformation in their lives amen i love that i've been um i love that so much i'm like i just want bernie to tell more stories um <laughs> i'm actually been teaching i'm doing uh six week boot camps on specific subjects and right now i have 29 people in five boot camps and the topic is empowering kids to encounter god and so we've been talking through this. And one of the biggest things that we're kind of taking away is this idea of putting kids into an active participant role instead of a passive participant mm. role. Yes. So, so often we just speak at them or we tell them things, but we don't ever help them actually take ownership of it. So one of the things I will do every time I speak to kids is tell them, God has something to say to you today. God wanted you here on purpose, mm -hmm. your job, and, you know, they'll say, well, my job's to sit quiet. Yeah, sure. We'd like that. But your job is actually be on the lookout for what God wants to teach you. 
So you need to be looking and praying and thinking about what you think God had you here today. And what it does is it puts them automatically into their actively participating instead of just sitting and waiting for it to be over. And I will completely tell them, if you miss what God wanted to teach you today, that's not my problem. That's your problem. So you need to be watching. And if you're sitting by someone that maybe is not helpful to you, you need to move. And it's all that idea of putting them into this, this role of taking ownership for the relationship with God. And that's been so powerful. I've done that for a lot of years, but in the last six weeks, I've really been teaching it. It's been really powerful to watch people try it and it's working and it's so simple, but it's that idea so, of, okay, you're in So it. we're talking to a lot of parents at home today and, and how can we have these things, uh, how can we do these same kinds of things in the home? I know, I know for me, one of the big things is to not, th there's always this, power differential you know we as adults seem to know it all and we have the power and everything and kids are you know are kind of in an assumed position we need to come alongside we need to to at times become their peer purposefully and i know with my own kids to be able to share what god has taught me in scripture and and to be open about that process and about oh i thought that this passage was about this but then god shared this with me and this is hard for me, or this is, you know, share our struggles, share what we're learning. Those can make a huge difference uh, for kids to see the process in our lives and to see that, that we haven't arrived. We're in the same process and in this relationship with God. But what else can we do at home? What, what can parents do to, to make this and not to make this happen, to create the environment where it could happen? Well, I think one of the things, uh, I, at least what I'm helping parents do right now uh, in our wonderful 2020 um, uh, quarantines, um, I don't know who all is in that, but one of the things I'm wanting them to do is to help their children express what's going on with them. And that expression can, can be about God, it can be about their own grief, about their own sense of loss that we can then use to direct back to what some of the scriptures do to get to encourage us. But I, one of the places I've, um, I, one of the things I've been talking to parents about is to creating spaces. And for instance, a space somewhere in your house where you can lay out just a large piece of a white paper and put crayons and markers and colors and whatever, and have them draw what they're sensing, what they're feeling. And, and, I probably like the idea of just starting out, what are you, what, what's going on with you? Just tell me what it is. And then directing them to what is God saying about that? And perhaps even having a silent moment of saying, let's ask God, what would you say about this? What is he saying to us? And then letting them draw or write again, what God is saying to them. They need to be able to learn to express it in a lot of different ways. Another way they can express it is through music and songs. I have another uh, suggestion. They make a space for um, where a child uh, or anyone in the family can sit and listen to some music. And it doesn't necessarily always have to be a spiritual, but uh, we're creating a new um, CD. Well, I don't know if this will be a CD because now we're streaming. But anyway, I don't know all that, but I do know the words. One of our song is, is called Not Far Away. And it's all about how close God is to us. And then another song is a wonder song, which is they wonder, what does God like chocolate or vanilla? Or, you know, we have all kinds of wondering things that goes on and gives them opportunity to wonder. So um, I think there are ways, uh, and, and let's face the fact that first of all, parents are the primary teachers of their children. So what can we do to give to them in, in their home, in their everyday walk around lives with their children to be that primary teacher? not only about math or science or with the, the intellectual, but about their spiritual lives. Well, and, and why not use our phones, our technology to help with this also? You know, we, we, we have our kids uh, play on, on tablets and phones to keep them busy. How about uh, really showing them, you know, some kids really don't enjoy reading, but there are Bible apps with easy translation Bibles 
that we can teach our kids to use and listen to the, the reading of scripture and show them how to, that they don't have to listen to chapters and chapters. They can listen to a couple of verses and then, and, and they can handle it. They know how to do the technology, just show them a way and they can hear the scriptures and then do their, their coloring or, or responses of whatever kind and listen to it over and over. It can be so much easier. Great. Now, um, you talked about, you know, parents during this COVID-19 time, um, we, we love to suggest uh, a couple of different things that could be really helpful. The Jesus Storybook Bible, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a generic title. The subtitle, the subtitle tells it, every story whispers his name. That's a great view of scripture. Every, the Bible is one big story with lots of little stories, and every story whispers his name by Sally Lloyd-Jones. We highly recommend that. If you're not familiar with it, you'll want to get it. Um, I'm going to show this one too, Gordon, because yes. this is by Sally Lloyd-Jones as well. And this is, it's a board book, but it's the Lord's Prayer, and it is kid-friendly, and it's just beautiful. Hello, Daddy. We want to know you and be close to you. Please show us how. Just found it and highly recommend it, Hi. especially for your little or little. Yeah, but and of Show course we, again, Melissa. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, that is great. I'm not aware of that. Is it just new? It must be new. Either, I, it must be new because I didn't know about it either. Either Sally or her publisher is really good at naming things because that's yeah. a great title too. Just loved that. That tells yeah. the the text of the Bible yeah. story. Another book we mentioned before, but Vernie Shore loves Spiritual Disciplines for Children: A Guide to Deeper Spiritual Life for You and your children. Subtitles are so good. And so um, we, we need to bring those together. But I heard recently a, a church pastor who was very disappointed that he thought parents would have done more during this time of lockdown. And it's like, here's the deal, families. It's not a time issue. It's a desire issue. We, we all have 24 hours and it doesn't have to be this big burden. It just needs to be a natural part of life. And that's what Kids at Home is all about. We're trying to give you some easy lifestyle changes, um, some things that'll be radically different for some families, mm -hmm. but we invite you to download the reproducible resource guide from our website, kidsathome.org, kids with a Z, kidsathome.org. There's uh, also a Facebook page, Connecting Children with God, that we would love to have you come on and interact and even share videos of, of your family doing things or a discussion or share your stories. Um, but we also, these, these, for those of you that are, are school leaders, homeschool, homeschoolers, children's ministry leaders, these resources are there for you to download and share with those homes that you um, are, are ministering to and rubbing shoulders with because as, as we've said over and over, parents are the primary spiritual leaders of the children and the children we want to fall deeply in love with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Vernie, it's been a delight to have you with us today. Uh, could we ask you to, to pray for our listeners and for us as we close out this time of learning God's ways? Thank you. I'd be delighted. Lord God, precious Father, Savior Jesus, Holy Spirit, our teacher, we bring to you our children. We ask that your Holy Spirit would enlighten them, that you would maybe even speak to them about playing with them, that you would help parents and advocates of children to find ways to guide and encourage our children to know you personally, to know how much you love them, to know that you are their friend, to, that they would turn to you in delight and in joy and in times of loss and in times when things are really hard, uh, that they would come to know you and trust you and um, be able to live their life with you. Help our parents, Lord. I could give them what they need. My heart breaks for so many that are, are struggling. And my heart is also joyful for those who are finding this time as a special time to be able to take time to be with you and to be with them. But we need your Holy Spirit to continue to guide us. Thank you. Thank you for sending your Holy Spirit. Thank you for giving us the promise that you will never leave us, that you will always be there for us, and that you will always love us. 
I ask you to bless our parents, bless our teachers, bless our country in this hard time and help us to choose what is right. And we know that that what is right is your way and your life and your word. And we thank you in the precious, powerful, all authority name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Vernie, my mentor, my friend, my leader. Melissa, great thank to you. see you again. And thank Thanks, you all. Vernie. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for being a part of this. Loved it. Thanks.